Hey, Lighthouse. Well, let's have some devotions together again. Just a reminder, if you have a question for our question and conversations videos on Friday, you can send that to questions at lighthouse.net. If you'd like to come join us here in lovely Seaside, California, uh, have some church with us on Sunday mornings. Uh, our worship service starts at 10. Invite a friend. We'd love to have you. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if this video is a blessing to you, go ahead and share it with somebody you love. And and uh, it's a joy to start our day uh, having devotions together. Let's wrap up Matthew 13 and the parables there in Matthew 13 today. And again, I would encourage you, don't listen to me if you haven't read the Bible. <laughs> like, go ahead and, and, and read the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. And uh, yet it's, it's a joy to have him teach us together. Okay, so after um, Jesus has given a bunch of parables that are really challenging. But there's one group of people that I want you to think about that that might have been even more challenged than you or I, as you or me, as uh, as we listen to the parables in chapter 13 of, of the book of Matthew. What you really see here in this last parabolic saying, in this last parable, is Jesus is Matthew's love for his Jewish brothers. You know, Matthew is a very Jewish book. It's the I would say it's the most Jewish of the Gospels. It's in Matthew that we hear the profound words. Think about how different we would feel about our faith if Matthew had not recorded Jesus' words saying, I did not come to abolish the law, but rather to fulfill the law. There is a profound connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament. A profound connection between the uh, God's people, Israel, in the Old Testament and the church, his people in the New Testament. There's there's things we can learn and it's not exactly the same, but God did not start loving people the day Jesus was born. God did not make a plan for people, for humanity, for salvation, for redemption the J the day Jesus died. Rather, this has been a beautiful string of God's will, of God's work, despite man's failure from the garden all the way to the finished work of Christ. So um, think about the parables that we've just read. If you're one of these uh, Jewish leaders, uh, one of these Pharisees, one of these scribes that are standing around and Jesus says, look, the it's like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed and it will wreck your life. It will change everything about you. Uh, and not only that, it's, it's like a, a pearl of great price. You're going to have to sell everything. All of this religion that you've grown up with, all of this law, this legalism, you're going to have to sell it all in order um, to receive the kingdom, to be somebody in the kingdom. It, it's like four soils and the, the people who are who are freaked out about the the worries of the world and the you know deceitfulness of riches and and the people who don't have roots ground in in the kingdom man they they're not going to even enter the kingdom you could be a jew sitting around listening to jesus going man do i have to stop being jewish in order to receive jesus do i have to become a gentile in order to receive jesus like it sure seems like to follow Jesus means to get rid of everything that I know about my relationship with Yahweh. And remember, this is a relationship with the one true God. This is God the Father they're talking about. This is not like I have to give up uh, worshiping um, the Greek gods or the Roman gods. Of course you have to give those up. They're false gods. But God the Father? But Yahweh of the Old Testament, do I have to give him up in order to enter the kingdom of, of heaven? So after all of these parables that are all about like, look, it's you, everything has to change. The kingdom of God is different. And to enter it, you have everything in your life has to change. And then he says in verse 51, have you understood these things? And they all said to him, yes. Well, in Mark Jesus gets on to these guys because they don't actually understand. But Matthew's a little nicer, tells a little different part of the story. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe, that's a very Jewish word, every scribe, everybody who is versed, who understands the law, who is who is in the lineage of Moses, the the scribes were the experts of the Old Testament law. Every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven. So this is somebody 
who has been so properly trained in the Old Testament, in the law, that they recognize and are trained in and learn about the kingdom of the heavens. They see Jesus and they don't say, oh, this guy's a threat to the Old Testament law. They see Jesus and go, this is the Messiah we've been waiting for. So every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. No, you don't have to stop being Jewish in order to follow Jesus. You have the richness of the Old Testament, which proclaims the coming of Jesus and the expectation and the prophetic cry that, that anticipates Jesus. And then you also know the reality of the kingdom of the heavens instituted by Christ and his work. Man, there is a richness to the scriptures. Maybe this is the takeaway for us. It's a different takeaway maybe for those scribes standing there. They are being invited in. You don't have to give up worshiping Yahweh. In fact, this is how you worship Yahweh, to be able to bring out these new treasures of the, the, the kingdom of God right alongside the Old Testament covenants of God's love for his people and show not only how they interact but, interact, but actually how this is one story of God's love going through all of mankind. For us, we might say, man, how rich, what a treasure the Old Testament is. That we don't have to make excuses for God. We don't have to explain everything, but we can soak in the richness of the stories that come before Jesus and at the same time appreciate following the God-man, Jesus himself, the one that the prophets waited for. Hey, be wise. Be able, be one of those scribes that is able to bring out treasures from the old and the new. All right, Lighthouse, be loved.